So the story came out about the cause of Matthew Perry's death, and I felt like we needed to break it down here. What do you think about that? Let's do it today on Medical History Mysteries. Welcome to another week of Medical History Mysteries. I'm Pam Maragliano Muniz. With me, as always, Tom Viola. Tom, how excited, not excited. Okay, I know I get excited about this topic and I'm excited to see you, but how intrigued were you when you heard about the cause of Matthew Perry's death? Well, again, I don't ever want to portray myself as this all knowing, you know, soothsayer, but I will say when I first heard about Matthew Perry's death, certainly I was saddened because I was a big fan of the show. I'm sure a lot of people were. You know, he always struck me as one of the most, uh, the, one, the funniest character on the show, as far as I'm concerned, and just always had a, this, you know, this look on his face where he can make you laugh just with a look. You know, he had pure comedic genius, you know. And so I was saddened by his loss because I thought, wow, you know, what a way to go. I mean, he, he drowned in a hot tub. And I did hear that that some maybe ketamine was involved. And that made me suspicious because I knew Matthew Perry always had his struggles with addiction and, and with substances. And he was very candid about it. And he really wanted to help others, you know, avoid that dark place, as he liked to call it, you know, where he went in his life and, and, and try, try to strive uh, to to beat addiction uh, and all of its demons. And uh, and so when I heard ketamine was involved, at first I thought, well, maybe he was being administered ketamine uh, to treat his addictions because ketamine can be used for that. Uh, maybe he was being administered ketamine in a clinical setting to, to because maybe he had depression or some other issues, which again, ketamine is used for that. Uh, and again, you know, heck, even we used ketamine for a while in dentistry. Uh, as a dissociative hallucinogen to, to sort of remove people away from the actual procedure to sort of, you know, give them this out of dental chair experience, you know? So, and there are some dentists who still use ketamine, as a matter of fact, as part of their sedation techniques. But then I started to realize there might be more to the story because it seemed like it was, okay, the ketamine was involved and then it just died. And I said, Something, something's down right here. There's got to be more to it than that. If there was ketamine in his system, you know, how much, where did he get it? Was he being treated? You know, give us more details. I don't want to pry into the man's life because, you know, again, it is his private life, but it just seemed like there was more to it. So, of course, we find out now that he was being administered boluses, large doses of ketamine um, by, of all people, again, this is all alleged, right? Everybody's innocent until proven guilty, right? allegedly by his personal assistant who you know i don't believe had any real medical training uh it was being prescribed to him by you know two different physicians again allegedly don't know for sure right until proven uh and and the supply was coming from someone who is known in the in sort of those circles to be a great supplier of that drug again you know don't know for sure all alleged but the problem with this is Again, we don't know what we don't know about our patients. Matthew Perry was out there as a staunch advocate for, you know, people who suffer from addiction. And yet, even so, he was a victim of that addiction, ultimately. You know, and, and the one thing I can say for sure is a lot of people say hearing loss is the one disorder you can have that people get mad at you for, you know. Why can't you hear me? You know, why do I have to repeat myself all the time? And so I've also heard that substance use disorder is the one disease you can have that people blame you for. Like, why don't you get over it already? Why, why don't you just go sober already? You know, clean up your act and, and get, get, you know, get back on the wagon. Well, if anything, Matthew Perry showed us that despite his valiant efforts, and despite the considerable resources he had, he still, like everyone else, struggles with some demon. In this case, it had to happen to be substance use disorder. And he was preyed upon, at least allegedly, by people who he was looking to for help, or maybe they weren't there to help him. Maybe they're there to enable him. 
And so I want that to be the message. I don't want to imply that I know anything about this case other than what people know. And I don't want to accuse anyone who's, you know, right now it's all alleged. We have no idea if any of this is true. And therefore, I don't want to you know, impugn anybody here. But I'm just saying it goes to show that even though we believe our patients, you know, don't have a substance use disorder, they might, a lot of it is, you know, hidden under the, their mask, which is, you know, their brave face that they show others. But we've got to be aware that that is always an underlying risk for us as dental professionals, because when people use substances, that can impl that can impact dental treatment and dental therapy. And if we're not aware, then we may do harm to a patient when we don't want to. You mentioned that there's legitimate uses for ketamine. How is it administered? I would imagine it's a really strong jug to be administered at home. It sounds to me like it's something that is administered by a doctor on a, a fixed cadence. It's not necessarily something that that somebody can just take whenever they feel like they need it. So oh, no. yeah. as a dental professional, if a patient is legitimately under the care of a physician receiving ketamine, how do we have this conversation about maybe how it's administered or how, you know, just kind of for us to understand that they are in fact safely taking it and are there red flags that would tell us otherwise? Well, you know, ketamine is administered to, typically in a clinical setting for depression. Um, I'm not going to, I don't want to draw any con comparisons to, you know, uh, methadone, but it's, it's sort of like that. You go to a clinic, you receive your dose of ketamine, you're being, you know, followed and monitored by a, a physician or a medical professional. So it's, it's definitely administered by that sort of ketamine infusion. Uh, but there's a real dark market for ketamine. Uh, it's used at a vet as a veterinary uh, anesthetic. Uh, and uh, veterinarians will tell you people will break into their office and walk by millions of dollars of expensive equipment and just steal the ketamine because it's that valuable uh, on the street level. Uh, and there is even a product uh, called esketamine, which is a, uh, a nasal spray that's used to treat uh, resistant depression, drug resistant depression. So ketamine has its uses clinically for sure. And, and I'm going to say that people who are getting ketamine for those reasons would probably tell you about it but if you didn't ask maybe there's enough stigma in their mind to say well i really don't want to tell you i'm on ketamine for my depression you really wouldn't know it because i don't get it at a pharmacy i don't get it from a medical doctor i get it at this clinic so i'm not going to mention it fine everyone's entitled to their privacy but not us right we need to know everything about that patient if we're going to use medications on them if we're going to use um, things like uh, anxiolytics or any drug for conscious sedation we need to know these things so it's important to always have that doubt in our mind so that we are always ready to ask that question. And I you know it's always going to be the same three questions, Pam. You know, what do you take? Why do you take it? And did you take it today? And that applies not just to prescription drugs, but everything. So be as well informed as you can when you take that medical history, because that's going to be what saves you and your patient from harm. Will ketamine administration turn up on a drug website if we're looking it up? It might. It, it depends on whether or not the, the the drug testing center has ketamine as one of the listed you know drugs that should be covered by that test. Uh, it may not be. And then again, in some, I don't know about every state. I don't know every law in every state. Maybe in some states, uh, the use of ketamine in this way, as I described it, is protected by law, and therefore, you know, an employer can ask questions about it. You know, I don't know every state and every municipality's take on it, but I do know. It's important to ask the patient and have and just have that frank conversation. And you know, if they tell you, great. If they don't tell you, well, you did your best to find out. Absolutely. And again, another message for us to always maintain a really great relationship. Listen, you know, right? We've got two ears and one mouth for a reason. Listen yep. to our patients, create that relationship, create a safe space so that hopefully they will disclose this very important information to you. Agreed. Well, I appreciate your insights on this. Of course, I wish, you know, RIP to Matthew Perry. And I hope that, you know, this story just doesn't end there, that we as health professionals take from it and learn from it. And hopefully, you know, we're making the world a better place one person at a time.
And Pam, let's not forget that sometimes it's not just dental professionals that are listening to us. Sometimes it's some lay people out there. So I hope the message gets to them too. You know, if you're listening and you're not really a dental professional, but you just like the content, you know, spread the word. It's important for all of us, uh, not just in the dental professions, but in the medical professions, we know everything we can about our patients. Absolutely. After all, we're just people, people caring for people. So regardless who's out there listening, we're grateful to you and we can't wait to see you all next week. Thanks, everybody.